with Gemini, you can take action on the data that's inside of Google Drive today, but Agent Space allows you a low code, pretty much no code solution to connect to all of those sources of data and allow the end users to take those Gemini actions on that data as well. You are listening to another episode of Cloud and Clear, SADA's cloud transformation podcast. I'm your host today, Veronica Rollin, Senior Director of Advisory at SADA. And today we are pleased and honored to welcome back to the show an amazing colleague of mine, Kelly Wright, Director of Workspace. Hello, hello. So happy to be here. Excellent. Now, Kelly, before we get started, we have to make sure our listeners don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel on their favorite listening platform so that they can stay up to date with the latest Cloud and Clear episodes from SADA. All right, now that that's taken care of, Kelly, welcome back to the show. I'm really excited to be here to do this with you. I don't think we've done a Cloud and Clear together yet, so this is incredibly exciting. Now, Kelly, I'm very excited to have you here to talk about today's topic, which is going to be agent space. Um, as we remember from last year at Google Next, uh, there was a buzz and we just constantly heard the words AI, Gemini, AI, Gemini. If you could say that there was a topic of Google Next 2024, it had to have been Gemini and AI. Mm -hmm. As we look to Google Next coming up April 9th through 11th, we know that agent space is probably going to be a top contender for that number one word said at Google Next 2025. So we need you. Can you start by telling us what agent space is? Yes, definitely. And I will take you up on that bet because I think I have heard agent space is the number one word I've heard in the last two months. So I uh, really think that that's a solid bet I could take. Google's agent space is going to use your data to help your end users complete complex tasks more efficiently um, by providing summaries, answering questions, performing actions um, based off of your company's unique information. That sounds really interesting. So why, why do you think customers are excited about this solution or why, if they're not excited, why should they be excited? Most companies during the pandemic became SaaS neutral. So all of your collaboration, your productivity, all of your knowledge information are spread across multiple sources. So think about having your data in Confluence or Jira. You've got users chatting in Slack. Maybe uh, your sales teams are in Box or Dropbox. You've got OneDrive, SharePoint, Google Drive, all of the different sources. With Jim and I, you can take action on the data that's inside of Google Drive today, but Agent Space allows you a low code, pretty much no code solution to connect to all of those sources of data and allow the end users to take those Gemini actions on that data as well. So let's say I want to understand a project that we're doing with a specific customer. And that data could be across Salesforce, it could be in Google Drive and Slack channels as well. I don't wanna to have to go to three different places to have to find that data. Or even more than that, many places will you'll see five, six, seven different sources that a user would have to go to, to search that data and then also take action on it. In this case, you're going to find end users being able to search all of that data from one central hub and then also be able to take action on it, such as making the emails, having all of the links ready to go. Um, so I'm really excited to see what end users do with that sort of power of functionality in their hands. Okay. Um, well, that sounds thrilling. I have a bunch of ideas of what uh, agent space should be doing for me and actions it can be taking. Um, but you mentioned it sounds almost like uh, Google's going back to part of its roots, which was creating an amazing search engine and they're just using it now within enterprise data uh, and opening up the doors to different data sources. Is that sort of a, a, a summary plus the no code, low code piece that you mentioned? 
Yes, that's exactly it. Really going back to where Google started, which was its Google search capabilities. And now you're just getting all of the additional technologies with Vertex AI, Gemini, LLMs, without having to code any of it. Okay, fabulous. So I'm a customer, user, I'm listening to this podcast, and I'm saying, well, what's SADA doing for the, for for us, right? How are we engaging? So I know you've launched recently a proof of value service offering, um, led you know a lot by your team. So what is SADA's role in getting uh, agent space off the ground within our customers? Yes, definitely. So with our proof of value, we are aiming to do a couple of things. First and foremost, the product is very new. So as a new product is launching, we want to help enable your team to have those conversations with Google. We want to help make sure the, if there's any issues or expectations, we're helping to coordinate that with Google, with the developers there. um, And we have all of those connections. Additionally, we all want to make sure that if you're going to invest time in this product and you want it to be of great use to your end end users. We want to show that value. We want to make sure your users know how to use it. So we really are leaning into our expertise with people and processes, as you know so well, um, and honing in on not only just making sure the product is out there, is technologically sound, it's connected to your high impact sources, we also want to make sure the end users know how to use it and the end users are trained they are seeing the value on it and then we will work with you to understand like what the next steps are are there more connectors that you would see even more impact for your end users are there any sort of like technical concerns that we can take as a next step do you need custom developed workflows to add on top of this really finding the value of how this is a great starting point and then continuing to grow this this product with you. Okay, that's obviously, for those of you listening to the podcast who know me, um, Kelly said my favorite words, adoption and people. Uh, So we're really thrilled to be partnering with Kelly's team uh, as a change management practice to make sure that folks do understand what they're getting from agent space and and how it's working. Uh, We've heard a lot, you mentioned a lot of different ways to interact with different sources, right? So you mentioned Salesforce and we've heard of Confluence and Jira. So really bridging the gaps between different sources of data. Now, as with all change, and AI in specific, and you know, you're talking about getting access, uh, there's also concerns. So how do you handle and talk to customers who may have some misconceptions about how agent space works and does provide those answers back? And, and ultimately, what else are we doing to kind of make sure that customers feel really safe about their employees using agent space? So with AI and really honing in on, this is a connection to a source product, not necessarily a small amount of source data. It does cause some concerns with uh, classification, with ACLs. Am I going to see an email that I wasn't even copied on in the first place? And the misconception there is that if you're connecting to a full source, you'll have access to everything in the source, which is an incorrect conception. Google is built it up so that it is respective of any and every ACL inside of that source product. So let's say I'm connecting to Box or Dropbox. Google doesn't ask for all of the ACLs for every single document, every single shared drive in there as part of the configuration. It's going to read that from the source itself. So it's not coding any of that into the system. It is reading that via APIs. So as long as the data is in the correct classifications in the source, you're not going to see it if you don't have access to it via agent space. That does open up questions around data AI classification 
and um, ACLs, maybe you've had Google Drive for a very long time and those ACLs and the permissionings have just grown into a mess over time. We also want to help you there. So if as part of this proof of value, we find that, hey, we might want to take a closer look at some of those uh, permissions, even with the new Gemini features with data AI classifications, we can work with you um, to solve those concerns before we expand out the product to a broader user base. We want to make sure everybody is um, comfortable with how everything is already set up in their source tenants. Okay, so we're really here to partner on mm -hmm. and and to support those questions on, wait a minute, is someone get, going to get access to something they shouldn't have? And, and we help customers figure that out. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's, uh, as with much of the work we've seen with AI, a little bit of training and hygiene, potentially on how data is used uh, and where it's stored and making sure those that the access is, is appropriate. So, okay, fabulous. Um, one other question for you. So we've talked about agent space as low code, no code. We kind of come in. People have been going down this AI road with Google for you know a couple of years. And there's probably some folks who are um, very knowledgeable in a product like Agent Builder. Um, so what would you say to someone who's using a product like that and saying, well, I have this, what does agent space get my organization? How do you differentiate between those two solutions? That's a great question because it is a little confusing. Real, real talk here. Um, agent space is built on top of Agent Builder. So essentially from a technical aspect, it's just another agent. What agent space gives you though, is the ability to take some of those custom agents that you've already built inside of agent builder and connect it with agent space. So some of the, uh, custom LLMs, they need to stay where they are. If it's, if you're using Google's LLMs, Google's, uh, search engines, and you want to be able to connect it in with all of the other source data that you're pulling in with agent space this is how they work together they are not necessarily competing products they are working together to make a more central hub for the usage of those workflows and those connectors Okay, fabulous. All right, so agent space is out there, everyone. You need to know about it. It's clearly, um, you know, we're gonna be at Google Next. It's gonna be the topic there. We know that Google often saves a few announcements to make a big splash at the next event. So as you look to the next couple of days preparing, is there anything that you're looking forward to learning about or how would you like to see the product evolve that maybe we can, Hint to Google right now and those developers can get on that before April 9th. What do you want to see from the product, Kelly? I'm really excited to see the roadmap for actions. So with some of the workflows right now, the, the tool is very much looking at information and gathering the information. You can then take Gemini and say, hey, write me an email for this based off of all of this information you gave me. I want agent space to also be able to make my calendar event for me. Um, it's getting there. It's getting close. Um, and really be able to take action, send that email, write the calendar event, send my service now ticket over. Um, can I chat with, uh, my services person on that ticket straight from agent space. So really just looking forward to some of the roadmaps on creating the actions and the workflows in there. Obviously, as I said, you can pretty much build any of those workflows with agent builder and connect it to agent space as well. And we're just waiting to see what, the pre-built connectors, we want to be able to take some of that technical load off. 
Okay. Um, I'm all for taking the technical load off. So that sounds great <laughs> for me. And if we can also find a capability to find my car keys when they're missing, agent builder would be, agent space would be my absolute favorite. I know we can, a girl can dream. Um, okay. So that's what we're hoping we see. We'll learn more at Google next. Uh, obviously Kelly, this is all evolving so rapidly. So for anyone who is attending Google Next and wants to learn more about how SADA is helping prepare our customers for agent space and that launch, please come find us. We are at booth 2862, and we would love to have you get time with Kelly to learn about what we are hearing and seeing in those sessions and what we're seeing out in the field. So uh, do follow up with us and uh, reach out to SADA. So Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for all your insights on Agent Space. Uh, I'm excited to see what you're able to do in changing the way people work uh, with our customers. Uh, imagine a couple years from now, we are going to be saying, remember when Agent Space first started? I feel like we've had it forever, right? How could I ever work before Agent Space? So uh, looking forward to that, but it's been a real pleasure to have you on today, Kelly. Really excited to be here, thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, you won't want to miss any exclusive insights from leaders like Kelly. So we will see you next time on Cloud and Clear.